The Lord be with you. We have a busy day today, anniversary of the baptisms of those that were baptized in this quarter. So that will take place to begin our worship service. I realize we are going to say a creed twice. The Apostles' Creed during the anniversary of baptism and the creed that the confirmation students wrote on their retreat where the creed normally is. Just want you to know, I know. <laughs> Second thing, in the prayers you're going to hear two names. Ron <coughs> Fells was in the hospital this week and he's now over at the Maples for some rehab. And Willis Melgren is in the hospital. And uh, they ran some tests and actually it's been good news for Willis. Our, uh, our theme is peace. So we'll um, uh, keep that in mind. We have John the Baptist in our gospel lesson and our theme is peace. Let's uh, rise and sing two verses of On Jordan's Bank, the Baptist Cry, and those <coughs> celebrating the anniversary of the baptism, I'll meet you over at the baptismal font. Please rise. <laughs> All right, those celebrating the anniversary of the baptisms are to come up with their parents or primary caregiver as when God claimed these beloved young people in holy baptism, we made sacred promises. Parents promised and if you have a bulletin, parents you can read to faithfully bring our children to worship to teach them the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in their hands the Holy Scriptures, and to provide for their instruction in the Christian faith. Sponsors, godparents, and this congregation promised to nurture them in the Christian faith and to support them and pray for them in their new life in Christ. Today we keep and renew our promises. Now, what your parents are to do is dip your finger in the baptismal font and make the sign of the cross at the appropriate time on the appropriate body part. That you may hear the good news of Christ, the word of life. And parents, as you put it on, you say, receive the sign of the cross on your ears. that you may see the light of Christ illuminating your way. And parents, you would say, receive the light of the sign of the cross on your eyes. That you may sing the praise of Christ, the joy of the church. 
And parents, you would say, receive the sign of the cross on your lips. That God may dwell within you by faith. Parents, receive the sign of the cross on your heart. Oh, excuse me. On, yes, on your heart. That you may bear the gentle yoke of Christ in serving. Parents, receive the sign of the cross on your shoulders. That God's mercy may be known in your works. Receive the sign of the cross on your hands. That you may follow in the way of Christ. Receive the sign of the cross on your feet. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. And if you each give me your baptismal candle. And now I ask, do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last day. When you were baptized, an assistant minister handed your parents a candle. It might be the candle that you are now holding and said, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. We are proud that you are part of God's family and workers with us in the kingdom of God. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the new life you give us through holy baptism. Especially, we ask you to bless each of these young people on the anniversary of their baptism. Continue to strengthen them in the Holy Spirit and increase in them your gifts of grace, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge in the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now, Almighty God, who gives us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and forgives us all our sins, strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, Keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Share God's peace by greeting those around you. Peace, Eric. Eric, peace. Paul, God's peace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. the
peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. <laughs> Poet Wendell Berry said, When despair for the world grows in me, I come into the peace of wild things. I do not who do not tax their lives with forethought of grief, I come into the presence of still water. In Psalm 23, He leadeth me beside the still waters, He restoreth my soul. When everything feels hopeless, when we feel as dead as the dry bones in Ezekiel's valley, God calls us away from the workaday world. God calls us to breathe in the holy breath of peace. When we light the candle of peace, we breathe in the one who restores us. Whatever we face in life, God's spirit of peace will dwell in us. As we wait for God's time, in faith we light the candle of peace. Our peace is in the Lord our God. Come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Lord be with you. And also with you. Stir up your power and come, powerful God. You made your son the king of kings. Please help all people of the world to love each other as Jesus loves us all. Amen.
is from Malachi, the third verse. See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Indeed, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts, but who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like a fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi, and refine them like gold and silver, until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord, as in the days of old, and as in former years. The word of our Lord. The second lesson is from Philippians chapter 1. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to think this way about all of you, because you hold me in your heart. For all of you share in God's grace with me, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the compassion of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you to determine what is best. So in the day of Christ, you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the third chapter. 
In the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip, ruler of the region of Iturea, and Trachonus, Lysanias, ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God, the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. I would like to invite the children up. What do you think that is? A nativity scene? You know, that's a good, that's a good guess. But it's one of those annoying puzzles. Okay? And I want you to think of this puzzle as your life. The Apostle Paul, today in our, God, or, or in, in our second lesson, said that he believes that God, who began a good work in you, will bring it to completion on the day of Jesus Christ. So God is working in you and is going to complete you, pull you all together and make you complete in the day of Jesus Christ, okay? So we're going to take and hurriedly try to put this together and make it complete. Think I can do it? <laughs> that might be true. We might not be able to get it together. You probably could do it. But I'm stubborn enough not to let you. Just think of this as God working on your life all. And God can put together puzzles much better than I can. Oh, we've got a piece left over. <laughs> but you get the point. It's supposed to be a cross. Okay? <laughs> Somebody figure it out for me later, all right? Just think, God's putting you together, and he does a better job than I do, okay? Let us pray. Repeat after me. Gracious God, we thank you for your promises. We thank you that you are at work in us. And we will be completed, a masterpiece, in the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. A couple of weeks ago I read a quote by a French philosopher, theologian. And he said, humans 
think they are physical beings trying to be spiritual. And he said, rather, we are spiritual beings trying to live in a physical world. We're spiritual beings trying to live in a physical world. We often discount the fact that this is a spiritual world. God is working in it and in us to do something. I don't know if you're as disturbed as I am. I, and I don't want to enter into the culture wars, so I, I, I want to be cautious about this, but uh, a few weeks ago I preached a sermon uh, uh, about a study about people who were who actually practiced their faith, actually practiced their faith, their lives turned out to be more fulfilled and, and happier. And someone mentioned to me that an, a study had just come out that suggested children of religious families were less generous than those who are non-religious. So I thought, well, I'll go look up that study. And what I was surprised at was how many people glommed onto that study and started saying, oh, look, non-religious people are just as good, if not better, than religious people. Even a sports blogger picked up on that. Martin Marty wrote a brief article on it and just said that at the University of Chicago we threw that around and we were going, how come the person who performed the survey didn't ask what did I do differently that my results are different than hundreds of surveys before. See, all of a sudden, it's assumed it's true. If it's against religious people, we're going to assume it's true. But on the contrary, hundreds of surveys prior to that suggest quite the opposite. So we might ask, so we're living in a world that seems to be anti-spiritual, especially anti-people who are religious. Scott Simon yesterday on Weekend Edition uh, pointed out the reaction that uh, newspapers have had, editorialists have had to this recent shooting in San Bernardino. And the fact that all the politicians sent out tweets, let's pray for the people. And the suggestion was by these newspapers, prayer is not going to fix this. Um, Jack Ford at Think Progress said, if you think talking to the voice in your head is helping anyone but yourself, you're wrong. I'm not going to be bashful about saying so. Uh, Daily News, front page, their headline was, God isn't fixing this. Cowards could truly end gun, the gun scourge but they let it continue, and they hide behind meaningless platitudes. Scott Simon reflected and said, people in his office say there's a term for that. It's called prayer shaming. Shaming religious people for having a spiritual answer. 
And really, quite frankly, what has made our country great has been our religious convictions, has it not? Is there any law that's truly enforceable? All you people who go over the speed limit, I know you're looking at me, <laughs> the law is not enforceable, is it? Once in a while, you might get caught. Once in a while. What makes us follow the law? Well, de Trocqueville, Alex de Trocqueville wrote back in the 1800s that what sustained the unique American democracy were the voluntary associations, like churches, that lead citizens to choose to obey laws that governments cannot enforce. So, it's our religiousness that has made our country great because people will then obey laws that are not enforceable. We call those the church and other organizations mediating institutions within our, our country. So what's an answer to all, these, all this gun violence and all these deaths? The true answer is enough thoughtful Christians acting like thoughtful Christians. We're the mediating influence in culture. We need to show people how to act. Thoughtful Christians acting thoughtfully. Advent is a time to prepare our hearts. John the Baptist comes today. And what happened in ancient times, when the king was coming to town, they sent sort of the city inspector out before the king. And he inspected the roads to make sure the roads were nice and flat and there weren't any, wasn't any mud or um, other objectionable things along the road because the king was coming. And the inspector would walk through the town. Uh, people that they would consider undesirable, well, why don't you put them in jail for a few days? I uh, you know we would object to this heavily today because the king is coming. Let's clean up the town. The king is coming. Well, that's what John the Baptist is about. Let's clean up the town. Clean up our hearts. The king is coming. The king is coming. And we can do that in two ways. John gives us repentance and forgiveness. The baptism of, for repentance and forgiveness. Wash away our sins. Let's begin with something that we can do that's very physical and concrete. I read an article this week by a person by the name of Jeff Miller. He's an evangelical Christian, and he was astounded when he read uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer's letters from prison that Dietrich Bonhoeffer said he took great comfort in using the sign of the cross, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, upon himself. And Jeff Miller is going, I thought Protestants threw that out as religious nonsense. But Bonhoeffer said, no, our faith is very physical. And when we use that sign of the cross, it's very physical. And it does something. He says, it blesses me and it reinforces within me something powerful and important. It was, um, by the way, Martin Luther instructed in the small catechism, bless yourself with the Holy Cross every day. Um, 
Bonhoeffer said it was objective. There's something tangible and actual about tracing the points of the cross over one's body. C.S. Lewis, by the way, he had uh, one of his, the master demon talking to the junior demon. And the master demon says, uh, Christians can be persuaded that the bodily positions makes no difference to their prayers, for they constantly forget that they are animals and that whatever their bodies do affects their souls. Whatever our bodies do affects our souls. So Bonhoeffer said, it's something objective and it affects me. And he said, it's something objective that seems to affect others around him. Thoughtful Christians actually acting thoughtfully. John says, repent. The baptism of repentance for forgiveness. And that is the next key we have. Forgiveness. I really believe we live in a spiritual world. And forgiveness is huge. It is a key. When forgiveness is taken back, is, is not allowed to full, flow freely. Something happens. It's almost like the universe locks up. I remember out in western Kansas, a family, a couple, the wife had a aneurysm and they rushed her to the hospital 50 miles to get to the hospital and by then it was much too late for her but they put her on respirator kept her going and of course I was called and, and we prayed you know I want my wife to recover the husband said and we prayed about that but the doctor said, there's no chance here. One in a million. So after weeks, a couple of weeks, and don't you think we should maybe remove the respirator? No, 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 I could never do that to my wife. I could never do that. Six weeks pass. Get a call to come to the hospital. Pastor, you don't understand what's happening in my family here. My wife and her sister inherited the family farm. Mom gave it to my sisters and they split it down halfway. And several years ago, when we were combining the wheat, our combine went onto our sister's property. And she came over and she was so angry it was just such a little bit. She was so angry. My wife hasn't talked to her sister since then. And pastor, she wants to come to, to my house and help me and help with my sister's belongings. I don't want her anywhere near the house. Pastor, what do you think? My answer was simply, it's time to forgive. That night, that husband went home, met his sister-in-law in the house, and they started going through all the belongings and cleaning up the house and getting him a good meal. And that night, that man's wife died. And I've always wondered, was she waiting for forgiveness? Amen.
Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe. Emmanuel has come, is here, and is coming soon. Let us join in prayer for the church, the earth, and those who are in need, that all receive what God promises to give. O oh God, our hope of unity, come to your church around the world. Purify your people and give to all the wisdom and courage to proclaim your word of forgiveness and renewal. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, our Savior, come to the earth that you made. Nurture the health of lands and seas. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God of peace, come to all the nations. Inspire heads of state and regional leaders with a passion for justice. Bring peace throughout the world. We pray especially for our country in yet another mass shooting, the 355th this year. And we pray for those 14 victims, their families. We remember the people of France, Syria, and Afghanistan as well. 
We pray for peace. Lord, in your mercy. O God of love, come to everyone in need. Heal the sick, especially Mitch Allen, Odella Arnold, Ken Bohannon, Karen Bowman, Katie Brady, Linda Brashear, Pam Cole, Kelly and Lucy Cowell, Jeff Dykeman, Ron Fells, April Hollinger, Larry Hopper, Debbie Huff, Dustin Jones, Alan Caymans, Jim Lampy, Richard Law, Alan Malcolm, Katie Mayberry, Adam Miesenbrink, Noah Miller, Shauna Nelson, Bob Okri, Lynn Peterson, Lori Pettit, Cindy Plaster, Carl Severson, Florence Stilwell, Kylie Timmerberg, Ann Wilmer, and Willis Melgren. Are there any others? O Lord of hosts, we praise you for the lives of all the faithful. Comfort those who mourn. Lord, in your mercy. O God of compassion, come to our congregation and our community this Advent. Help us to prepare for your coming. Make us gifts to one another, that no one remains destitute or despairing. Lord, in your mercy. Receive our prayers, merciful God, and make us ready to receive you when you come through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
This, this box has our commitment cards in it, and I realize not all of you have them in, but uh, we take them at any time, so keep them coming. Let us pray. Gracious God, you provide for our every need. You have called us to live as disciples of your Son, Jesus. Help us to see daily the abundance of your blessings in our lives. Guide us in the use of all that you have provided. We pray that as we dedicate these commitment cards, as well as the commitment cards we still expect to receive, that you would bless the sacrifices of those making these commitments. We pray that you would help expand the resources these cards represent to meet the needs of your mission among us. Help us by your spirit to let go of the worries and fears that claim us so that we can live in your abundant life. Help us to put our trust in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, John. Let us pray. The Lord be he with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come. You may be seated.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. You let you, your servant God. Holy God, you have called your people together to test our faith, not always able to understand your plan, but knowing that you will guide us on the right path you chose for us. Lead us as we go out with good courage, your hand leading us and your love supporting us, through Christ the King, our Lord, now and forever. I want you to uh, look at your messenger and make sure you're not missing anything. And if Marissa Weaver is here, she wanted to make an announcement, but I'll just... Oh, there we go. Okay, Marissa. Oh, is it on? Yep. Uh, good morning. My daughter Lucy is part of uh, Messiah here at Lighthouse, and we are doing a fundraiser again this year, The Breakfast with Santa, so you probably have seen our little flyers and in the church newsletter, but we just want to make sure everyone is welcome. It is a fundraiser, um, so anybody can have breakfast. It's only $5 a person. For children, it's only $2, um, and kids under two eat for free. Um, we're getting it catered through fire and ice, so it's good breakfast. And um, so if you have other friends or family that you'd like, right, we are opening the doors early. For, yeah, um, it's next Saturday the 12th, and we do have Christmas program rehearsal that morning too. So the doors will open early for Messiah families at 8.30, and then the event itself actually starts at 9, and it goes until 10.30 a.m. So Santa will be here. Um, you can take your own photos. We'll also have photos provided. We'll have some activities for the kids, and like I said, breakfast. So anyone's welcome. We really encourage you all to attend. This is one of the few events we do together. So thank you. That next Saturday, Breakfast with Santa. But by the way, Lucy calls me Pastor Dan. I'm one of the few people, and Marissa, who knows she's saying that. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Um, I wanted to remind everyone of another event next Saturday, December 12th, which is our annual Children's Christmas Program. And it's at 5.30 on Saturday. I think somehow it maybe didn't make it in the spirit, so I just wanted to remind everyone so everyone knew aware that, was aware that that's going on. It starts at 5.30. Um, last year we had so many children that wanted to share their other musical gifts with the instruments that they played that our prelude started at 5. So that was really a lot of fun because you get to see everything else that these kids can do. Um, Jay Walkers, who sang um, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, they're opening up with that same beautiful song in the program. And so it actually ranges from our Messiah youth from two years old all the way up through seniors in high school. So we've brought all the kids in the last couple years so everyone can be a part of it. So please, please come. We would love to absolutely fill the sanctuary if we can. It would be such a gift to the kids. They work so hard. We've been working since October on the program, and they just do an amazing job. We practiced yesterday, and they are excited and ready to show everybody what they can do. So please come Saturday at 530. So next Saturday, you can begin the day with breakfast with Santa and end the day with the Sunday School Christmas program. Rick. One more. Um, as a follow-up to the most recent congregational meeting in which we taught, you did the surveys and talked about congregational staffing and so on, for the next few weeks we're going to have small discussion group meeting if you're interested in, uh, <coughs> excuse me, after this or between the services. 
and each week we'll have a couple of us from the council sitting there and it's a time for you to ask some questions or bring some comments to us about uh, staffing and a poss especially the possibility of bringing an associate pastor. Um, so that would be your opportunity in the next few weeks to just sit and informally let us know your questions or comments that you'd want to uh, want us to consider during that process. So, oh, I'll be doing one of the tables and Dave or? Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you, Rick. It's been a full day. Receive this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Guided by the gospel, we go in peace, live in love as Christ loved us.